Raghunath, are you ready for this? What? The wisdom of the sages trainings that are going on. Where? At the Eco Village, the, the Govardhan Eco Village in India. Why? To totally transform your life spiritually. Who? Who? You, me, Radha Swami's gonna be there, other great teachers are gonna be there, lots of cool people. How? You go to wisdomofthesages.com slash events. You find all the information there. Hadi Bo. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hi from Super Soul Farm. This is Wisdom of the Sages with a a daily yoga podcast with your host Raghunath and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Stuba Das. Welcome to Sunday. It's Sleeping Sunday, and it's another day of Q and A because we are backlogged with questions, and that's okay. Q and A day is fun. We're here live on Zoom and um, live on Facebook. Facebook people, if you want to do this on a regular basis, hear the Srimad Bhagavatam, our regular study of it in a lighthearted way, but a serious way. It's light and serious. Okay. <clears throat> it's fluffy and delicious and deep and rich. Join us every day. We do this every day. And if you can't wake up at 6 a.m. Eastern time, which is when we're doing it tomorrow morning, you can just binge listen wherever you get podcasts and YouTube. If you listen to YouTube, remember to like, share with a friend who's on the spiritual fence. They need some light in their life, perhaps. Share, share, share the podcast with them. A lot of people get here just from like hearing it from another people. So we have a very big community. We find the community very supportive. We all become addicted to it in a very, very healthy way. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Ravanath. Hmm. What's going on? Give me some info. Give me some 411. We got uh, questions today, and there's kind of a theme emerged without our really trying, but uh, a lot of guru questions. A lot of guru that. questions? Guru questions. We should, we should run for guru like they run for candidates. I'm Raghunath. <laughs> and I want to be your guru. <laughs> <laughs> and then all these Kastuba ads come out. Raghunath fell down. Oh, mud slinging. <laughs> in 1999. <laughs> Raghunath. <laughs> but here's something really funny um uh, me and sammy from youth of today um because we're getting ready to do this are you doing today. a show we, she's show's if, coming up yeah if you don't know about youth of today you know we were that was my band before i was a devotee and sammy was our drummer and he witnessed me quit the band and he witnessed me become a brahmachari he witnessed me start shelter he witnessed all these devotees be all these devotees come in, for, uh, into bhakti from shelter and so he's witnessed my life. So when I got back from India, he texted me, hey, I'm ready for the tour. It's exciting. But you know what? What? Um, you know, you've, I'm looking at your Instagram feed, Raghu, and it's like you've got – this stuff looks so fun. All your trips and all your travels look so much fun. It's like you've been taking these kids with you from, like, youth of today, getting them into straight edge, getting them into vegetarianism, getting them into bhakti. He goes, you need to think of your magnum opus now. You got to think of like a retirement plan for all these people. You should have a thing like, I'm Raghunath. Come die with me. <laughs> Here at Govardhan Hill, we set up the hardcore Krishna core retirement community. You will get bhajans every day, beautiful vegetarian, vegan cooking. Imagine that. Come die with me. That could be our thing. Can we all die yeah. together. We've grown together. Oh, no, now it's together. really become the cult. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, we it's, drink no, the it's like retirement living. It's retirement home. <laughs> okay. You can be part of it. Yeah. Old Bear can be part of it. <laughs> okay. Mara's like shubbery. You know, she's younger than all of us, but she's still working around the ashram. Let's <laughs> let's um let's let's move on from the let's all die together theme. <laughs> I'm not talking about like tomorrow. Like, what was that cult? Where yeah, that's what I'm were, saying. There's that cult. Where they all wore Nikes. Yeah, I forget what it was called. Heaven's Gate. Yeah. I'm not talking like that. I'm saying like a very traditional, like, you know, people have like senior living centers now. 
Why not just have it with your crew, your Wisma Sages senior living? Why not? Let's transition together. Okay, but that could be super soul. Yeah, let's talk about mystical things. I want to get yeah. an ashram on the Ganga. What do you think about that? I think um, it's 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 a lovely idea, Who, but I don't know if you're ready. To, I don't know if you're ready Ganga. to take it all on. We're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I think work on super soul first. You know? It's coming. It's coming. This is the okay. next phase. You got to think. You got to think that. You gotta. You gotta dream, Kostuba. It's about dreaming. Yes, I'm yeah. with you there. I'm with you there. <clears throat> Let's dream about announcements today. I I dream, dream announcements. Dream. Thank you. Uh, the first Bhakti Recovery Group in-person meeting is today at the Bhakti Center in New York City at 10.30 a.m. Wow, that's a historic event right there. Yeah. That, I think this is well, the first in-person. Really. It is. We did a Bhakti Recovery Group in Italy. Hello. Um, I suppose, but that was a yeah. retreat. This is just like a straight-out okay. meeting, you know? Okay. Oh. It was the first of its kind. All right, Bhakti Recovery people, proud of y'all. Yeah, this is the first in New York, Jiva G is saying. First in New York okay, as well. Gotcha. Um, also, we should wish a happy birthday to Mallory, whose oh, Mallory. little head is behind Ragu. <laughs> oh, where's her little? Oh, there's her little there it is. head. She's her uh, little, the little person. Yeah. Happy and birthday, Mallory. Yeah, Mallory happy is birthday. one of the more transcendental people I've ever met in my life. She's just like. She's quite transcendental. She's happy and she's she's into it, you know? Yeah. She's great. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and we're back to 6 a.m. shows tomorrow. 6 a.m. Got to wake up early, Rago. Prabhu, I have been waking up early, despite is, my sickness. Well, the jet lag is working for you? It's, like, it's not the jet lag. I've just been sick. Being sick wakes you up early? No, I'm just dedicated to the cause. Okay. All By right. the way, I'm going to Florida. I'm going to do a program in Florida. Those who are going to the Festival of the Holy Name. Yeah. Uh, that's not this weekend, and it's not next weekend. It's the following weekend, the weekend after Thanksgiving. I'm going to do some program down there. I haven't set it up yet, but it'll happen, and I'll announce it. Okay. Um, we'll do some kirtan, some satsang, some – can we call it wisdom of the sages if you're not there? Yeah, why not? As long we'll as you don't do anything weird. The sages. <laughs> Just don't do anything weird. <laughs> All <laughs> right, everybody. <laughs> I'm passing around a hat. I want you to put your Venmo – Credit card in the hat. No, All right, we got to get this show started. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> no, anyway, we're let's have the program first down question. there. We're looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward if we have any others out there or Zoomers, let's all connect down in Alachua for the big festival of the Holy Name. I'm driving down with the kids. Okay. Looking forward to it. Jim Wood says, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to read a question, Roganath. Okay. Hit me. This is coming from a lovely person in Germany named Chantal. Oh, she's a Zoomer or a Zother. She's and so, an other and a Zoomer. Well, Chantal writes this. And I, I mentioned we have a guru theme kind of today. Some different questions about gurus, okay? Guru theme, okay. Being super new to bhakti, here is my most burning question. And I apologize because she wrote this a couple months ago and we haven't gotten to it because we had a lot of days. Where a lot of our Q&As have been like in-person ones, right? So we're going back to some of the older ones that were written. So um, she writes this burning question. I understand that a guru is essential in bhakti. And at this stage where I am so eager to learn everything, I can get my hands on, and I'm sorry. And at this stage where I'm so eager to learn everything I can get my hands on and progress yeah. on my path, I feel the need for a guru to guide me. Hmm. I feel like Radna Swami and Bhakti Tru Swami and Bhakti Tirtha Swami who have passed on um, but I've read their books and watched their lectures are fitting this. They're, Chantal's idea of what a guru should be, what they should embody. But in this Kali Yuga, I wonder if there's a guru of this caliber, caliber still living or even near my location. Can I find someone genuine and trustworthy uh, when I'm not part of a temple community? And this is an interesting, she says, and, and this is a little, this breaks my heart a little bit, but I know this happens. I've been to my local temple, and not a single person has said hi to me. <laughs> oh my gosh! The four times I visited, right? I mean, in one sense, sometimes they're understaffed, and you come there for a certain, you know. But still, don't, 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 yeah, don't, yeah. You know, let's hear, okay, her, the, let's hear her pain. Okay, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, not even to my baby or husband. I didn't greet her baby. 
I know you gotta say hello to the babies when they come. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the person who gave the lecture, and this also happens. And the person who gave the lecture seemed to answer questions in a quote unquote radical religious way. Mm -hmm. right? Maybe like fundamentalist tone to it or something like that, maybe. Right. I'm desperate for association with devotees. Mm -hmm. So this experience left me a bit deflated. I get it, right? I totally get it. Okay. I totally get it. This together with my childhood experiences of the priest I mentioned, uh, I think this has been a bit edited, has left me skeptical. Yeah. Fair enough. Reasonable. Does my guru exist? And how do I find or meet them? I like this. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm here. I'm. Okay. Speak to me. Oh, okay. Um, first of all, I totally relate to not being spoken to going to a temple. I went to the temple so many times. No one said peep to me. I was like, come on, convert me. I'm, I'm malleable. I'm open to information. Talk to me. Let me join your religion. What will it take? I'll lay down, play dead, roll on my back, <laughs> rub, my, rub my tummy, teach me your information. No one, everyone just like ignored me. Huh. <laughs> and when I did meet someone, it was I, I it was some fanatical thing or some. Yeah, I met a lot of like people that seemed really bizarre. And maybe, what, but, maybe, but you know what? Yeah, I looked right. at that all as a test. In retrospect, Christian wanted to see if I was serious. Okay. And I met the wrong person, the wrong per like one wrong person after another. But there was something in my heart that felt like whatever these people are, as kooky as it is. There's some, there's some real, beyond a grain, there's some real big nuggets of truth here. And it just kept drawing me back. I don't know hmm. why. Okay. Because I tell you, it was, I had a, it was one weird experience after another. And even when I tried to like ask questions, it was just like, it just didn't work. It didn't connect. Maybe we and need to discuss a little bit about like, even before we get to the, how do I meet my guru question? Just like the, how to approach the temple question, right? How to deal with a dysfunctional temple in your neighborhood. That happens. And I think <laughs> it's important to find the community. But, but, but what I found was. What did you find? I found that I think due to my persistence, Krishna sent me a person that spoke to me. You found someone. Did on, you find them or did they find you? They found me. Uh -huh. They found me. It was, it was, it was, I mean, Christian. They saw you directly. wandering, lost and lonely. <clears throat> and, and you know what? T to this day, I love this person. You know, it was yeah. Satyaraj Prabhu. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and at that point, I felt like, wow, um, you're cool, but everybody else is crazy. But then the more I got into Bhakti and the more he helped steer me, the more I realized, no, actually, this person's also cool. And this other person's also cool. And this, and I just didn't, it was like there was some type of barrier that wouldn't allow me in. And and in retrospect, I'll say it's probably due to my own offensive nature that uh, that Krishna was waiting to see if I was actually a ripe candidate for devotional service. And I think we have to prove ourselves sometimes, actually. I think we have to, I, I, get, I get jealous when I see people like, you know, Katie Wickoff, who's one of our, our, our Zothers out there, who, you know, came with us to a Puri, or came with us on pilgrimage, who's been listening to the show from Joe Rogan uh, times every day for two years, never met devotees, never went to a temple. And then she just has like a deep connection with the deity on the first day, you know, burst out into tears. For me, it was like, I don't get it. I, I was offensive. I didn't trust this person. I brought all my cynicism and bad attitude into into sacred circles so i think krishna is su krishna susses us out because okay, krishna but... is letting you into his inner circle what happens when you get into krishna's inner circle you start to control krishna right because that's how friendship works you start to control your friend you start to control your beloved how with love and then krishna gives himself to you so krishna wants to make sure you are trustworthy before and he so therefore, he, he has instructed all of his followers to, to be <laughs> rude and ignore well, you. Well, <laughs> no, this is how we should look at it. Okay. On the other side, if we are in a temple, we should go out of our way to make people or like, like, you know, a, a policy. You know, Radhanath Swami really embodies this. That the most important thing is someone 
shows up on the property. Hey, how are you? Welcome. It's so nice to have you. What do you need? Would you like a little Prashad? Come have Darshan. Hello, baby. <laughs> right, like to the baby, right? Oh, hello, little. I was like, hello, to me. What are you like, talking about? Hello, baby. Hello, how baby. are you? Hello, little baby. How are you? <laughs> hello, little baby. What an adorable little baby. <laughs> Say hi to their baby. Come on, people. Do we have to think of everything around here? Right. Do I have to do a tour of Iskon temples? To... No, I'm just kidding. But but, 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 but let me say this right now. Let me let me say this. That Chantal said, you know, I went there. I went there four times. I came back disappointed. Uh, or what, what what term did they use? Um. Deflated. deflated deflated yeah and so i totally understand that i think it's not on you it's on although i'm not exactly blaming them for all i know there are three people desperately working their you know working 24 hours a day just to try to keep that place going and they're doing all that they can you know it, it may very well be they don't like have time that. to say hi to your baby come on well, no i mean for for real but for real they may be running around you know it, it can be hard you know sure um, and then again, the other visitors ideally would kind of be like, hey, we're all one community and, you know, and it may not always be that way. So here's my point is that if you're going there expecting it to be heaven on earth, the spiritual world manifesting fully and there's every step is a dance and every word is a song and it's the sound of music and all that you're there's a good chance you're going to come back deflated you that that being said you know you may have great experiences there but don't put your faith in this very ancient teachings that has been going on for thousands and thousands of years don't don't let your faith in that rest on your experience at this one small place in this one blip in history that could be completely disorganized over yeah. you know overwhelmed with you know you know bills from 20 years ago and yeah because you, know, you one, you're one setting yourself up volunteers yeah you, you may be setting yourself up for disappointment and let's put that okay but now so now let's get to the other part of her question it's making her feel like well will i ever meet that person that i need to meet that that i can bring my questions to that i can feel inspired by that who speaks to my heart who inspires me to go deeper into this who i can through this person, I could find my service and, you know, my dharma. And, you know, I'm looking for that person. I'm ready to dig in. I'm eager. But I don't know how I'm going to meet that person. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing that at you. Right? Throwing at me? Yeah. Krishna is real. Krishna is real. This process is real. And he sends messengers to you. Now, it might come in the... It, it might come in this... If you're... You know, Chantal's really attached in a loving way to this community it might come through this community and the guests we the guests we um introduce the sages community uh, well, yeah the wisdom of sages community the guests we have on on sunday when we usually have a guest or something that comes out of me and kostuba or Prabhupada's writing don't think that the guru can't work through the devotees guru is not isolated to one solitary figure who's a swami guru comes in a a, a, a a clan of messengers clan. come to us. <laughs> okay, we're going from the cult to come die with this cult to the clan. Huh? The clan, the cult. <laughs> <laughs> How can I turn more people away from this movement? <clears throat> but the guru, the guru Varga, the guru family, the message, the family of messengers comes and Krishna is real, and he'll this empower yeah. people to speak to you. And there's people that have spoke to me. They're not official gurus, but to me. Krishna tagged them to speak to me in a language that I could hear it. Mm -hmm. And it's real. And and you're a real person and you're really sincere and and Krishna's taking care of you. If 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 he wasn't, you wouldn't be where you are today. And also I've seen a lot of people who are uninitiated and don't have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the guru yet yet. But they've made plenty of spiritual advancement over years. This is real important, Raghun. I, I think when we took this whole, and the next question is going to be a really oh, deep topic about a guru question. But when we, when we enter, you know, we want to be able to have full, open hearted faith. And at the same time, we want to be very cautious because we live in a world and in a time where there's a lot of counterfeit stuff going on, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we want to find that person that we can open up our heart to fully. And, and, and I think there's, I don't want to in any way, um, like, 
I'm supposed to, like, we want this romantic vision of I meet my guru. He touched me, put his hand <laughs> on mine, and then he touched me. And, yeah, and, not, and you're and, trying to make it like Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw him across the room and he glanced at me. And, and I I, I'm not at moment. all questioning Chantel's sincerity in this. Right. I'm, I'm not questioning that, but. And and it, it may manifest in in that romantic way, in a sense. And by romantic, I don't mean like you know, like um, you know, romantic love kind of thing. But a romantic meaning, like you know, that picturesque, cinematic, whatever way that we, you know we imagine it in a story. You know, it, sure. it may manifest like that. It may not. That's that's not important. We want to take all the pretentiousness out of this relationship. It's so important. It's so sacred. Anything artificial, let's get it out of there and let and let's kind of like boil this down to its essential thing. And and I think you were doing that, Rugnath, when you said, you know, it's not just about meeting this special person that suddenly changes our whole life, but it's about that there's a Krishna is changing our life through the different forms in which He speaks to us. One of them is the Shastra, right? These sacred texts. God speaks through these texts. The real thing is, I want a guru. It means I want to, I want to connect with God. I want to hear from God. I want to hear God's message for me and understand how I can, how I can um, come closer. And so that may come through the books. It may come through all varieties of people. You know, it may come through all varieties of people. So, where are you? You sound like you're inspired in practicing bhakti. Um, you said you're you were um, su you know eager to learn everything. And, you know, so you're getting some kind of like spiritual inspiration here for sure. Where is that coming from? Who is that coming from? <laughs> if it's it, identify that and and see that as guru coming to you, right? That's that's Krishna coming to you through the words of another. You know, and and, and you may still be like, okay, but I still don't have that person who's in whom I want to really entirely place my heart and place my faith and I'm looking for, and that's great. You may have to be a little patient for that. Continue to look for that. But while you're waiting patiently and while you're eager for that, identify where Krishna is speaking to you, where you say, when that person speaks, when I read this, you know, I feel that, that spiritual energy, that, that clarity, right? That, that clarity about how I'm supposed to, um, live how I'm how I when I hear the words from this person I, it makes me think yes I want to be more like that yes I want that gives me the strength to let go of my mundane attachments that gives me the attraction you know to 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 give to you know to bring my attention to hearing about Krishna you know um, serving Krishna that's guru already working in your life guru is already working in your life otherwise you wouldn't be where you are right now there you go Right. There you go. So, so that's it's that's an current. important. It's a, point. it's a current moving, yeah. um, and it's not necessarily held in one person. And the romantic facet of it, I just want to say, for someone like, for like you and your wife, because Gita, yeah, you've been married for how many years now? Twenty years? Eighteen years? Twenty, I think, twenty-one years. Okay, twenty-one years. After after eighteen, you don't have to count anymore. But that's good, good for you. Um, <laughs> you know, if you look back and if you had a romantic moment when you first met her and we were in the temple room and she passed me the key lamp. And I thought, I want to marry this woman. It's something like that. If, if that <laughs> happened, cause Juba, you, it's full privilege to say, yeah, we had a romantic, you know, meeting when we first met, it was, we knew it, etc. But you're saying that after 20 years. Okay. So yeah. this idea that we really want this Hollywood guru concept, like I saw him, he saw me and I knew then. Okay. 20 years later from now. But when we say it immediately, it mean it, it to me, it just means like, are you like grounded in our philosophy? Th that, this is interesting. Yeah. This is, are you grounded in our philosophy or is this whole thing just like, I felt it. I don't, I don't trust my feelings. Are you kidding? I, you know how many times people have said, I fell in love and I saw her and she saw me and our eyes glamoured and, and we made passionate love and we married and divorced a year later. You know what I mean? It's like, who cares about romance? I want the real deal. I want real well, love. Real this love is, is not just infatuation. Because let's say, let's say you have a young person that's um, ready to get married in life, right? Yeah. And, and then listen to how they speak. What, what are they saying, right? Is it, is it like, um, 
I, this is the reasons why I'm search, you know, the, why I'm eager to be married. I want a partner in my life I, that together we can, you know, serve in this way. And who, you know, they may come, they may come to it with like this mature kind of talk, mm-hmm. or they may come to it from an entirely romantic fantasy level. So who do you think, who do you think is more likely to have this successful marriage? Right. And so when we're talking about guru, it shouldn't just all be this fantasy, you know, um, kind of thing. It should be rooted in what you know, and I, I'm going to make a recommendation right here, Raghunath. OK, yeah, please recommend something to me. This book. book. Yes, wow. this book. Right I was here. joking. It is a book. <laughs> it is a book. All right. Tell me. It's got the generic n- title. The Guru and Disciple book. That's <laughs> right? pretty generic. That's just, it's a generic. But I like that it's generic like that, right? It's like, here's the, the stuff, right? Who without the Who fluff. Here's the stuff without the fluff. This is written by Kripamoy Prabhu. Uh, you remember Fluffernutter? We don't need to go there. Right? That's, a squir- that's a pure squirrel right there. You need fluff, fluff, fluff to make a fluffernutter. This is the stuff without the fluff. I think one of our first <laughs> episodes is called Guru Stuff and Guru Fluff, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. This is the I got to hand it to you, Kostuba, and everybody should appreciate Kostuba at this moment. He comes up with yeah. these titles every day. He's oh, you like up my with, titles. Well, I didn't know yeah, you even like my titles. I do. Okay, they're good. very Thank catchy. You. They're very cool, and it's all you. I'm happy that you're happy. I'm, I'm happy, happy that you're happy. Thank you, Kostuba, for that appreciation okay. of Kostuba Day. Thank you. Thank you, Ragnar. Thank you. And he's very prepared. Every show, he's very prepared. Well, I'm prepared. I'm flying today. in by the seat of my pants. Everybody knows <laughs> That's true. it. True. <laughs> everybody knows. Everybody knows it. But this book, the Guru Disciple book. He just draws from the show. He, he categorizes it. And it, if you're thinking about approaching a guru, I recommend you read this book. You find this book, you go to Amazon and you search out this book, um, the guru and disciple book, because he just really explains what it's about. And I want to read to you just one little passage, Raghunath, Okay, There you are again, prepared, prepared. You're like a boy scout. Yeah. <laughs> All right, be prepared. <clears throat> so this, if you want to think about what a guru is, think about this. And, and this is important. I read this, I say, oh, this is, this is good stuff, right? There, there's a, speaking to the point that we were discussing a moment ago, that guru is coming in so many different ways, right? We're that channel that inspires you and informs you of what it means to give your mind and your heart and your soul and your time and your body and your mind and your words to God. Mm-hmm. Wherever that's coming from, that's the principle of guru working through. And so when we get to the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, which I think is in about two or three more years, <laughs> right? When we get there, 11th Canto is incredible. And there's this fantastic passage where this king meets this wandering kind of like spiritual character. Actually, he's not even wandering. He's sitting in one place, you know? And the king can recognize this person is deeply spiritual. Where did you get this from? Who did you learn it from? And what does he answer, Raghunath? Do you remember what he said? I don't know. He says, I got 24 gurus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Really? It goes through. It's good. It's good. Yeah. And so he's, gurus. he says, you know, the sun, the moon, the snake, the, the prostitute Pingala, the this, the, he, he shows how he like, through all of them, he learned some message, right? Um, and then towards the end of that passage, then Krishna is speaking with Uddhava. And, and uh, Uddhava asks, he says, after recounting the lessons learned from each of these 24 gurus, then Krishna says, one should approach a spiritual master who is full in knowledge of me as I am, who is peaceful, and who by spiritual elevation is not different from me. In, in other words, they're beyond the influence of the modes of material nature. And so, so then um, this is what Kripamoy Prabhu writes. He writes, the specific words the Lord uses here is matpada, or one who is devoted to me, and mat avijan, avigyam, one who knows me as I am. He goes on to describe the qualification for a suitable disciple. That the disciple who goes to find a guru should be free from false prestige. Check. (laughs) It should be endowed with feelings of loving friendship towards the spiritual master. And should always desire spiritual advancement. It is then that Uddhava asks Krishna what the qualities of a prapana are one who has no other shelter in this world but God, mm-hmm. who is completely surrendered to him and who loves him. Krishna replies by describing the 28 qualities of a sadhu. Okay, so if you're looking for someone to 
seriously make this kind of commitment to. These are the qualities that you're looking for. You ready? This is what you need to hear, because I'm, I'm yeah. glad you pulled this out. Okay. This is this, this is this nice. is beyond romance. Like for yeah. example, I see this woman over there or this man over there. They're a hunk, total hunk. This guy. <laughs> okay. Right? Okay, he's unemployed. He's got children by three women. Um, he's uh, <laughs> right. He, yeah, he, that he, marriage ain't gonna work. His car is it's in the shop happen. and it's not coming out. Uh, he's in debt, uh, behind on his promises. You got like, who cares if he's a hunk? You know, don't let romance trick you. You right. gotta find and, and that, the details. And when we're talking about within guru, it can be the way the person dresses, the way they speak, that they have lots of followers that are fawning over them. I know. That, you know, let's face they, it, people are dumb. Who cares? <laughs> a lot of followers. Yeah. Yeah. People are easily tricked. That's why you have to go with what you're saying. You have to get to the depth of yeah. what sadhu means. And you got to squeeze out any kind of I don't want to say squeeze out sentimentality because even as we mentioned there there should be a feeling of 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 love and affection but pretentiousness um facade. That guru may be the most awkward nerdy looking person you ever met in your life, but they're awkward. real. You know they yeah. you know what I'm saying? They they, they yeah. It, it, look for for what's real, and and now we're going to read about what's real. Okay, here we go. Hit me, hit me. Oh, Udava, a saintly person is merciful and never injures others. Even if others are aggressive, they are tolerant and forgiving towards all living entities. What about Bima? Whenever I get a little angry, I'm like, big deal. Bima was angry. Well, he had a role to play. His anger was geared in you know in a particular way. What about me? Can I use that? Your anger <laughs> is always on the on, on the spiritual platform. Oh, all right. Good. Thank you. His strength <laughs> and meaning in life come from the truth itself. Strength and meaning, or her, strength and meaning in life come from the tr truth? Truth itself. Truth itself. I like that. They are free from all envy and jealousy. That's big. And their mind You're is happy equal. for people's happiness. Look for this. Right? Yes. yes. Look for this. Yes, Tom, Tom Essig, he knows. And their mind is equal in happiness and distress. Mm. Thus, they dedicate their time to work for the welfare of all others. Me, me and Mara are complaining, are sick right now, and I'm just complaining about it the entire time. I was like, Mara, how are you? She's like, I'm totally sick, but she doesn't complain. She doesn't, you know what she does? All day, sits and reads. She's yeah. reading the biography of I enter now. That's what she does all day long. You know what I do? I complain. I argue. <laughs> okay. I complain to God. Why? What's going on? I think this complain means that you kids. should accept I, I... Mara as your guru. <laughs> 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 oh, now, now I'm getting a little worried, though, Mara. Now I'm getting a little worried with that reaction. Okay. She takes shelter of Iendra biographies, and I'm like, zooming through Netflix. About <laughs> the Somalian pirates attacking... Uh, the guy from Bosom Buddies, whatever his name is. <laughs> okay. Gonna, let's stick with this, okay? Uh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Bosom, Tom Hanks. Bosom Tom. Buddies. He is free from all envy and jealousy, and their mind is equal in material happiness and distress. Yeah. Thus, they dedicate their time to work for the welfare of all others. Their intelligence is never bewildered by material desires. And they have control of their senses. Their behavior is always pleasing never harsh think about this look for this in the guru right because i'll tell you something we're gonna tell me. like even just like in our own experience within the international society for krishna consciousness i think we've allowed people to be harsh and, and sometimes it manifests in big leaders and so on like, look for someone that's not never harsh right they may say things that you don't want to hear but they're not harsh. They never are trying to injure you with their words or, or, or let's say even callous about their words, you know, about how they're affecting one. I've seen heart. Have you seen harshness? Oh yeah. Even in the name of guru ship. Oh yeah. yeah you know, I've been so. harshed. <laughs> okay. I've been harsh and I've been, been harsh. harsh. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way. Actually, yeah, I feel the same. I've been way. harsh. And it's only by seeing a re someone that really embodies that, that, that has rooted out that out from their heart that's that that i really even understand that it's in me you know yeah and that it's wrong 
Okay, their behavior is always pleasing, never harsh, and always exemplary. And they are free from possessiveness. Um, they never endeavor in ordinary worldly activities, and they strictly control their eating. Mm, uh, uncheck. <laughs> uncheck. Um, <laughs> by the way, yeah. anyone who was ever harsh to me, I forgive. Let and it go. If I was harsh to anyone, please forgive me. Well, let me take this time to say the same. Mother. Please forgive me for my harshness, including you, Raghunath. I've really? been harsh to you. Are you harsh? Yeah. yeah. Are you harshal gore? <laughs> harshal gore <laughs> is another thing. Um, they therefore <laughs> always remain peaceful and steady. A saintly person is thoughtful and accepts Krishna as their only shelter. Such a person is very cautious in the execution of their duties and is never subject to superficial transformations because they are steady and noble, even in distressing situations. They have conquered all the six material qualities, namely hunger, thirst, lamentation, illusion, old age, and death. They are free from all desire for prestige. Look for that. Look, if the, is this person into prestige? Is this person wild? Does this person find their happiness in prestige? Right? Because a lot of time the guru figures are like, they're shown, their sannyasis, they're shown a lot of respect and prestige. Do they get off on that? Or do they tolerate that and they're not really into it? Look for that, right? Yeah. That, you just say, yeah, this, I, I think this is really important. I think it's super important. You give me a more enthusiastic, yeah. Uh, yeah! Thank you, okay. No more prestige! <laughs> okay. No, when I get it, you know, I mean... I, I was sort of gifted that like uh, fame at a young age. And so um, I, I'm really, I can, I, I don't know. I you know, I if have, you see someone that's see like someone into it, then you know their prestige. Yeah. I was just like, this is bogus. They haven't even bogus. learned the, 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 these lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, people, people want it. It's like a, it's a deep rooted thing to get, to desire honor, to desire accolades. Prestige. That's about as deep as it gets, you know, prestige. People want it so bad, yeah. you know, um, and so, and what's the point? Well, I'm, I, I'm almost yeah, done. What's the point? It's what's not going to give you what you want. That was if a, they think that that's where happiness is, it means they're not deriving their happiness through devotional service, through their connection with God. Sure. And sometimes, uh, you know, it's sometimes it's these people who've been around a long time, but they're not in a position. They're not a swami. They're just a humble brahmachari. You might or find they, or you know, or they're a there. simple yeah. temple devotee, or there's just a simple, nice devotee that I think are the most evolved. This is important, brother. You, know, you know, know, for the disciple, they have to be like, it's not this name that I'm concerned about. It's not being recognized as a follower of this person. It's I'm not search, you know, there's all I'm looking for is for Krishna to speak to me. And if I and and I'm and I'm looking wherever that may come. And and like you're saying, it may be, you know. The other thing is within, you see, the way that the culture is designed is that when there is someone that embodies this, right? And when there is someone, all the, and I'm almost done, there's a few more left, but when, the, when we see someone that truly embodies this, then the culture directs us to honor them, yeah. right? To, to honor them. It's good for us to honor them and, and it helps us recognize, you know, where to turn. But the point is that honor that that person receives, if they're not truly detached and truly connected, then they begin to, to try to find happiness through that honor. They, they begin to, that's where their taste comes. And so, even a very sincere person can begin to drift. Sure, and that's when why shown having that numbers of followers yeah. can be an impediment in bhakti. Because, that's right. Um, but, you know, I can name right off the top of my head a big a big handful of, People who are not in a position of like a big authority, but they're just great souls and I'm eager yeah. for their association, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't mean they're necessarily a monk, a brahmachari, a sannyasi. It doesn't mean you can't be pure being a grihasta. Matter of fact, sometimes you grihastas, householders, face the most incredible challenges just being Krishna conscious within an environment of being in the material world because you're raising kids or because you're you're you have to be somewhat immersed in the world to to do your duties as a grihasta it, it, the ashram the particular ashram being married or being single has nothing to do with a person's purity 
And traditionally, most gurus, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, were the grihastas. Um, were the grihastas. I, I think there are different traditions. Yeah. Right? Through, through all, there are different models. <laughs> but yes, you know, you're probably going to find many more that were married people rather than renunciants. So I think we, 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 it doesn't necessarily mean we need to find this single male, you know, this brahmachari male that's going to be our guru as, as, as well. I think that, important. that purity comes in all different forms and not even purity because as an extremist myself, we're always looking for these extremes. Who's pure? Who's a pure devotee? I'd be more interested in a person who's very interested in being pro progress. You know, I think it's a 12 step thing. Progress, not, not purity. Well, that's a purity in Perfect. itself. Progress, the, not perfect. Yeah. Perfection. What is yeah. it? Perfection, not progress. Progress, progress not perfection. perfection. Progress, not perfection. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I want to see people just say, I want to be pure. But to me, that is just pure. moving forward. Well, that's pure in my mind, in other words, right? Me like too. that's, yeah. And, and what I don't want is the facade of purity. No, right. you know what? That is, that's old. And I think if you've <laughs> been in old. this game a little while, the facade of purity has bit, you know, this entire culture in the, in the butt. For, it does again and generations. again. Generations. Yeah. It's like I'm publicly presenting, but there's a secret private side, and that's a big problem. Because Krishna, you know, he says in the in the the ninth chapter uh, <clears throat> that even if a person commits an abominable activity, they're, if they're still working on their path of bhakti, they're considered saintly because hey, you know what? People have some bad attachments, and they're going to resurrect themselves. They're gonna Krishna will resurrect them, and we're for, we're a culture of forgiveness. We're a culture of forgiveness, and people can get back on path. What people don't like, and and Krishna is Patita Pavana, Lord Chaitanya is Patita Pavana, the Guru is Patita Pavana. It means if you genuinely struggle on your path, but you're sincere in your path, Krishna reaches out his hand, and pulls you along. He preserves what you have, right, and and, and overlooks your shortcomings. Mm -hmm. That type of deep sincerity of feeling yourself i'm so fallen krishna sees that sincerity and he reaches out to those people what krishna can't tolerate and what the devotees can't tolerate and it says and, and human beings can't tolerate is a public represent representation of one thing but a private representation of another thing that's called hypocrisy and mm -hmm. no one can tolerate that it's intolerable because right. it's fake and we and, and in this and, and in a movement of spiritual life you need to be vulnerably honest with where you're at. You got to find one person to bear your soul to, be it a guru, a best friend, a peer. Bear your soul to that guru, friend, peer, etc., and then bear your soul to God. Here's my shortcomings. This is what I struggle with. This is where this is the quicksand I've been in. I can't do anything about it. Oh my lord, I'm yours. Please help me. Please reach out your hand. Throw me a rope. Help me out here. You tell God and you tell a friend. But if I tell everybody I'm just fine because I have to maintain some position, but it, it, but I'm sinking deep, that's called hypocrisy. Mm. And I can never heal myself unless I bear my heart to somebody and to God. Or else I just keep pushing it downward, keep pushing keep pushing my short and, and, and try to cover it up with a costume. We don't want to be the international society of costumes. We want to be Krishna conscious, not like secrets. Secrets. We're as sick as our secrets. Mm. You, you, what you're saying reminds me, and I shouldn't even say reminds me, but it, it brings my mind to an example. And I'm not going to name names or anything like that, but Ooh. like, no, but, but recently even there was a, it, there was a person who, there was sannyasi. You know, renunciate, guru. You know, um, and and being shown all this honor and respect and even worship, you could say, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But they were living this other life, and it was an abusive life, right? They were abused. They were using that privilege in a way that was abusive, mm -hmm. and they were doing it for years. Mm -hmm. They're doing it for years and years and, and, and having the audacity to talk down to others, to sit on an elevated seat and receive all that honor 
and talk down to others with a type of condescension. Or, you know, in the, this person's, their theme that they would commonly, almost always speak on was like Varnashram Dharma, right? And, and Vedic culture. And you can analyze all these talks and say, really what this person was doing was just arguing for their own privilege, right? Like I'm the male, I'm the Brahmana, I'm the guru, you know, I'm the sannyasi. So I'm at the top of the system and just talking down to others. That's why, you know, I highlight that thing about being harsh, you know. You, there are people that can speak about Varnashram Dharma and doing it in a way that it's fully compassionate and open without any condescension. But where you see that condescension, that's a red flag for me. And, 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 and after all these years, it's finally like fully out how this person was actually <laughs> living a life that was so far more worse, you know. You know, I... Then, 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 just let me just then, yeah. then, then the people that they were commonly talking down to, and it's actually that which breaks people's faith. You know, it's it's actually that 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 really, you know, um, is in my mind is really just so reprehensible. Well, this you know? is a um, I know this is you're. In, we're talking about a, a, a personal a person, but actually this is a reoccurring theme, and I think this archetype is what we want to shine light on. It's okay to struggle in bhakti. If this yeah. person had some – he was a sannyasi. It's okay to struggle as a sannyasi. Um, it's okay that at a young age you made vows, in, in perhaps in the mode of passion. Let's face it, our, our or, cerebral or, cortex, with, but with our cerebral sincerity. cortex hasn't developed till we're like 25 anyway. How many, you know how many okay. times I said, I'll never have kids. I'll never have kids. And then one year later, I was like, I love kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, you know, it's like we can change in a moment. And so um, to make vows at a very young age, which pretty much a lot of people in our movement did, it's a really radical choice. It's based oftentimes it's based on this uh, passionate desire to i'm gonna do it we're gonna do it i mean when i became a brahmachari there was no idea of ever getting married i was like i'm a brahmachari are you kidding this is the best <laughs> so it, it was it, but it wasn't based in uh, even understand it's just like a 15 year old getting a tattoo it's like this is the coolest black rose i got <laughs> tattooed on my forearm no yeah like sachi my my eight-year-old said like sachi did sachi just get a tattoo she got a tattoo without telling me. <laughs> okay. Right now. Yeah. And I was like, don't you understand? Your brain hasn't even developed yet. That's why there's rules. Is that legal that to kids tattoo a 15-year-old person? Kids can't drink yeah, alcohol. Yeah. That kids can't get a driver's license because they they don't have that intelligence yet. I get it. Adults don't oftentimes also. But taking that into consideration, when we make these vows, we get it. We get it that you took vows a, a, a long time ago. You can't live up to them. But – Krishna appreciates. I mean, how did you miss this well, part? Krishna appreciates those who struggle, that are sincerely this, struggling. This, hey, you know what? I couldn't yeah. do it. And whenever I see someone who's given up the renounced order, but they're still hanging in, I have so much love for those people. Whenever I see a devotee who's been really strong and then gets broken and has to come back in a humble way, what you don't like is people who get broken from their position and then you never see them again. It's in yeah. that disappearance, you might even question your own sincerity or what was your motive behind what you were doing. I really wanted to get a name. I really wanted to be a brahmachari. I really wanted to, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. like I be love part of the group, whatever. Who are dragging themselves through the mud, over glass, in the trenches, <laughs> but still reaching out to Krishna. It's a beautiful thing. It's real. It's real. It's yeah. real. And I can, and welcome to the world of dented cans. Right. Right, right. That, just like what you were saying, Raga. And we see this in, this is clearly illustrated in Sri Chaitanya's leelas in his pastimes, right? He was ready to accept the most fallen people, even the most sinful people. If they say, I am sinful, I'm screwed up, look at me, right? Help right. me. Anyone, even the most sinful, was accepted by Sri Chaitanya. But what he didn't tolerate even a little bit was hypocrisy. Yeah, you know, it, 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 that, that, like it. yeah, that, like that, it at all. That that facade of being this this um saint, when it, there, there there's some 
um, duplicity there. And just, and just like there's uh, like just like in high school, you know, there's the guy who lifts weights and he's really cool. And there's the letterman with the varsity jacket. And then there's the, you know, the prom queen. And then there's all the, you know, the cat, the co the, the captain of the, the girls uh, field hockey team, all that stuff. There, there is all these like positions in the material world. Then there's like that same thing exists within this spiritual society. And we got to make sure it doesn't fall into high school ness again. Where this person's the obvious leader because of the, this cool renunciation, Lord Chaitanya didn't go for it. Yeah, just like the milk, the doot baba. <laughs> That's right. Huh? The doot baba. Milk, milk drinker. The milk drinker. So, so we're almost out of time, but why don't I go ahead and, and finish this? Did we passage just do here? one question? Yeah, I think we maybe we ought to do the next question tomorrow. I mean, w while we're on this topic, maybe we, let's consider that. All right. Yeah, well, we didn't get to anything. I, I think it's such an important questions. topic. And um, sometimes it works that way, right? This was a good. This was good, though. Yeah. So, okay. Usually, me... I get mad at Kostub if he just does one question. <laughs> I get talk, harsh. You're the one that goes on and on. on I get harsh <laughs> okay. on you. Don't be harsh. <laughs> Don't be harsh. Okay. So this is the the last few sentences of Krishna's description of a sadhu, of what we're really looking for, of the substance, right? He hasn't mentioned anything about the person's ashram right whether they're married or not he hasn't mentioned their gender he hasn't mentioned the way they dress or the sparkle in their eye none of that has been mentioned yeah right? why don't they mention the sparkle you know right. the guru by the sparkle there's been nothing said about sparkling okay I'll, I'll pick up at the beginning of the paragraph that it started they have conquered over the six material qualities hunger thirst lamentation illusion old age and death how do they conquer over thirst <laughs> I think it oh, means don't that, pure devotees I, hydrate themselves. I, I think you know there, there's probably a lot of you, it would be interesting to read commentary on that. We should search for the commentary <laughs> on that. But you know, just right off the bat, I would think some of us can just like you're saying, like Mara's sick and she's not complaining, right? Like I'm yeah. thirsty, but I'm not complaining. You know, I'm I'm hungry, but right. I'm not complaining. I you know I'm dehydrated, but I'm not complaining. Not complaining. Um, they are free from all desire for prestige. And offers honor to others. There's so much a, a guru should, you know, like they have this Vyasa Puja day where they honor the guru and stuff. Right. We should see. I'm not interested in in investing my faith in someone that's into that. You know, maybe they. Quite honestly, I feel that the the, the pomp of those ceremonies is something that we don't need, and that probably does more harm than good. But a guru may tolerate that i do think it's nice to honor the teacher though that's part i do of like a, that's part of the culture no question the, the honor top. should be there no question but i'm talking about a lot of the external and we shouldn't the, if you're the teacher we shouldn't want it then you're the real then you got to want yeah. it was to to uh increase the culture right. because the culture gives you a bhakti so the, so the culture always has to be gearing us towards the substance though right and not the the fluff okay right they're expert in, in reviving the Krishna consciousness of others, and therefore they never cheat anyone. Wow. Um, rather, they are the well-wishing friend to all, being most merciful. Such a saintly person must be considered the most learned of people. Mm. They perfectly understand that the ordinary religious duties prescribed by me in various Vedic scriptures possess favorable qualities that purify the performer and they know that neglect of such duties constitutes a discrepancy in one's life having taken complete shelter of my feet however a saintly person ultimately renounces such ordinary religious duties and worships me alone they see the essence uh, they are thus considered to be the best amongst all living entities right look for the substance don't look don't the yeah, don't, don't put yourself yeah in the position where you regret you know try not to put yourself in a position where you regret that i i you know what i got caught up in the externals and look, i i missed the substance look, look for, for substance. what's nutritious creamy health food <laughs> nutritious creamy creamy rich what are you talking about? <laughs> don't go for the peanut butter not the fluffer nutter Okay. Oh, oh, I see where you're going with that. Get right. it? Very good. You yeah. know, it's a big so, issue now, hydration. 
No one talked about hydration. <laughs> where are we going? No, going? no, no going? I'm serious, though. Hydration. Hydrate. You got to hydrate. Are you hydrated? No one cared when we were growing up. Everybody's going to Where's your water bottle? Come on. Okay, we're good. Thank you. I think I'm free from the desire for thirst. I think you can check that one off my list. Okay. Well, let's put it to the test. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Sure. Come on. <laughs> bring it on, Kastuba. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. That was a nice way to start your morning. Thanks, everybody, from New Delhi to Peru to uh, Tennessee to Lebanon to California Jersey Shore, they're all here today. Where's Al Burrell? Is Al Burrell? Al Burrell from SSD Control wrote for the secret codes. Do you believe that, hardcore fans? But he's from, not here. From, he's not here, but from yeah. Vermont, from the Blue Ridge Mountains, this land was made for you and me. Page family, Bakhti and Roger Tompkins. Oh, hey, Chantel is here. Sh What's that? Sh Chantel was here this morning. You interrupted my, my song for that? <laughs> yeah, I could have interrupted yeah. it for many other reasons, but <laughs> this is a particularly good one. This land was made for you and me. Oh. From Thomas Essig to David Chantel. Charles Wilson. Chantel, let's reach out and maybe we can also steer you towards some good people in your area, too. Yeah, Send us a little direct, message to Wisdom Sages 108 at gmail.com. You can connect with me because we have a lot of friends in Germany. We were just with some great Germans in India. That Chantal didn't even reveal that she was, or we didn't reveal it. Oh, we did. Maybe we did say that she was in Germany. Oh. Any case, yeah, we know some nice German people. All right. With substance. With substance. Substantial, beautiful people. The beautiful.